Uh, my name is Evan. I work at Ripple on the Interledger protocol. I'm going to go through. Today I'm going to be talking very quickly about Interledger and streaming payments. So I'm the co-inventor of Interledger. I've been working on it full time for the past three years. So the problem that we want to solve is today if you tried to go and actually use cryptocurrency for anything, you would have a situation like this. You walk into a grocery store, you say, hey, do you accept Ether? And they would say, what is that? No, sorry. Um, and the fundamental problem is that all of these different payment networks are disconnected. You can't use any kind of type of cryptocurrency today for payments because you need the other person to actually accept that cryptocurrency. Blockchains don't solve the interoperability problem by themselves. They, blockchains are individual networks that have the same problems as traditional ones where they're all disconnected. What we need is a system for internetworking payment networks. And so this term, internetworking, comes from the internet. That's what, it, what it's named after. And at its core, the internet is all about routing little packets of data across independent networks. So what we need is a system for routing packets of money across independent payment networks. So what that would enable is me to pay you, even if I have some kind of super obscure cryptocurrency, and you just want dollars or whatever you want. So what Interledger does is it routes packets of money very similarly to how the internet routes packets of data. Um, I won't get into too much of how that works, but I want to walk through some of the cool things that this lets you do. So when we're applying this analogy with the internet, um, one of the things we get to is this idea of streaming payments. So if you broke up payments into little tiny chunks, and could route these packets super efficiently, what you could end up with is this idea of streaming payments. So one of the things that could look like is, oh, you need to send a bigger payment? OK, it depends on your payment bandwidth, which is a weird concept that we, that we work with a lot, where that would be measured in dollars per second that you can send, or whatever currency you have. Some of the cool use cases that come out of this, things like streaming media. So today, you might. Today, payments are super inefficient and clunky. And so we prefer you know, things like monthly subscriptions. I pay my $10 a month because I don't want to be bothered by this. If you made the payments super efficient and could do it on a very small basis, you could do things like paying for a second of video. So you're streaming me video. I'm streaming you money. And if I pause the video, I stop paying for it. If I walk away, I stop. If I come back and hit play again, keep streaming money, because it would be that efficient. Another cool thing that comes out of this is the idea of sign-upless services. Today in the physical world, when you walk into a shop and you want to make, you want to have some, some financial exchange, the exchange normally goes, I give you money, you give me good or service, and I walk out. I don't need an account, I don't need to sign up, things like that. Today on the internet, you always need to sign up for accounts because there's no way to do this very seamless, here's a little bit of money, you give me a little bit of service, rinse and repeat. As a business, for if you're giving me hosting services or something like that, you don't need to know who I am. You just need the money. And so with something like Interledger, you'd enable anybody to land money in your account, even if they're on some completely different payment network. So that would enable sign up list services. Another neat idea we've been playing with is the idea of a creative marketplace license. So the idea here is today we have Creative Commons license, which is awesome. If you want to give away your, your work, it's a really, really great project. One of the issues with Creative Commons is there's no way to have a license that's as easy to use where you can actually monetize your work. So the idea here is with something like Interledger, you could actually have a license that says anybody can use this content, you know, feel free to, but for every download or view or whatever kind of interaction you want to monetize, just pay me at this address. And the thing that's really missing today to, in order to do this is the assumption that just anybody could pay you. Because there's no interoperability and because we don't have internetworking for payments, if you did this kind of license, you'd be like, OK, anybody that has Bitcoin can now pay me, which is a tiny subset of everybody. The thing that makes the internet work is that everybody can access it quality. Last kind of fun thing to throw out there is if you connect every type of currency and payment network together, what you can enable is payments from weird currencies. So today you use dollars because everyone else accepts dollars here. Um, if everything's connected, you could pay with 
stocks, community currency, local currency, crypto, whatever you prefer. So I'll leave you with three questions to consider. Number one, which ledgers will be the most attractive when everything is connected together? What kind of features would you want? Number two, will, will interoperability bolster or kill app-specific tokens? And number three, what new businesses can you create with streaming payments? Thanks.